continuing with the battle of Nagakute from the game Tenka Tuitsu by Hexasim. We are in turn three and uh, I've already done some of turn three because I'm not going to do this in as much detail as I have been doing. It's going to be okay, slow and tiring for everyone. We have already had the movement chit come out of the bag and the blue combat chit come out of the bag. And with the blue combat chit, this unit took damage in its fight with this. These had a standoff, but these uh, put two more hits into a unit that was here from Clan K. And then the green combat chit came out and green had to fight back. A bit of a standoff here, standoff here, but this unit got that roll and with the hits it had on it its dice came out at minus three minus three and that was a one zero on the combat table and it was gone now so there are interesting things happening now because when uh, a unit from a clan dies the uh, is eliminated the rest of the clan has to make a roll to decide what it's going to do so it has to make a sort of clan morale check essentially um, and so clan K has just made that morale check and it's got a withdrawal result it rolled a 2 it had a plus 2 on the dice for having 2 units which aren't exhausted still uh, participating in the battle that gave it a four which is a withdrawal so um, these guys have to withdraw and they're going to get pursued by those two guys from clan D unless clan D wants to try and change its orders to defend but they probably don't they probably do want to pursue now Here's where it gets a little bit difficult here because these guys are meant to withdraw until they're uh, four hexes away from an, uh, an enemy unit. But then these guys are going to pursue them, but then they'll stop when they hit a zone of control. So. Here's how it's going to work. And these two units will try and stay together or I think end up together because it's clear from this that this unit can withdraw this way. And by the way, the uh, uh, the first chit out of the bag was Clan E and he sw swung round from here along this road round here to try and segment the uh, Aikida army so that this block here was separated from this block here and wouldn't just keep withdrawing in this direction they were trying to uh, he decided to try and break up um, the Aikida army into two pockets and you'll also see that Tokugawa himself has been activated and come onto the board and it's marching down in this direction where the uh, Tokugawa forces are hoping to defeat this lot in detail before turning their attention over there. That is now their plan. Um, cool. And so, but anyway, back to this. These guys have to try and get four hexes away, but without going into a zone of control of the enemy. So it's clear that this guy can come this way or even better drop down here where his allies will then exert zones of control on the pursuit and the pursuit will stop. This guy can't come that way because that will be through a zone of control. So it's likely to drop down in front of here, round here and back round up there. That's the way I, I'm seeing it and that's what I'm going to do. So for example if we were to go one, two, three into there, he's now one, two, three, four from any enemy unit and that would be him stopped. 
and then this guy will retreat here, 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 and then here, and we'll stop because he's now one, two, three, four from any enemy unit, and so we'll stop there. And so Clan K is as close to sort of um, uh, unified as I can get them in this situation, and when they activate next time, they will try and push together in some way, shape, or form, because that's how the game works, and you have to try and you have to do everything you can to keep your clans together. So there we go, and now what happens is this guy advances following the path of the retreat, so he comes into here and hits a zone of control and stops. And this guy also follows the path of the retreat and comes into here and then comes into here, hits the zone of control and stops. And uh, that's, the, that's the situation we reach now with that. But that's just, uh, you know, the, the ramifications of one unit being destroyed. So again, I think in the introduction I suggested this game might be quite chaotic and you can see how fluid um, the, the battlefield really is. Um, fantastic, really good. I'm liking this more and more, especially as the battle seems to take some sort of um, shape and you can start seeing this narrative develop of this isolated force here and Tokugawa himself heading in this direction hoping to uh, destroy them and then it's a question of what Aikida can do to get his forces working. He, we know, I know he's got chits from these guys already um, yeah, in the bag so if they get to move and can switch into move orders maybe they can get down into these kind of areas block the roads and you start getting a real intricate kind of battle going on um, which is really firing the imagination uh, it doesn't harm that the game looks so damn good as well so uh, that's also excellent that's where we are start of turn three end of turn three here then and that turn flew by um, and uh, it was mainly a turn of manoeuvre. So um, the main Tokugawa force has arrived on map here. You can see those three clans have arrived, four units in each. On the Aikida side, they managed to start getting stuff moving. Clan H got into an order that wasn't regrouped. They went in to move and took up positions in quite defensible terrain with a river in front of them and these <clears throat> what look like hillside to me kind of arrows protecting a lot of their um, flanks and similarly this unit got into defend and is now in a on a, some sort of hilltop <clears throat> where he's got defensive terrain all good terrain all around him um, down here clan J managed to get into defense as well and that one hex of movement is seeing them pull slowly into positions where again they've got these good um, defensive positions that they're hoping offer them uh, the opportunity to add, you know, firepower and uh, and so on um, to their uh, uh, to their um, defense and and it gives them non-obligatory attacks so they're not forced to attack the things that are around them um, so the uh, Aikida um, troops are trying to find good defensive positions where they're not just getting um, cut down like this in open terrain so it's a very tight battle um, and the majority of the Aikida uh, forces still needing to try and you know it'll be a while before this lot gets moving however the um, Aikida um, army has been putting some of its command points into its battle plan so they've now got four command points stocked up to try and get this um, Choda battle plan um, underway um, to activate it, they need. I think they need to roll two d six and get less than um, less than the number of command points they've allocated. And if they roll more, 
and the difference is subtracted from the number of command points. So let's say they had 7 and they rolled a 10, they'd lose minus 3 and they'd be back to 4 again. So, you know, there's a gamble. He, he, they could try and roll now and get try and, try and get less than 4 on 2 dice, but they may just wipe out all their command points. So it's prudent, I suppose, to try and get up at least to 8 or 9, 7, 8, 9, something average at least, and hope your luck's in. Um, but of course... Uh, it's a gamble because if you've got more than, uh, if you if you know if you if you put ten in and then roll a three, then you've just wasted seven points. So you have to make a call as to when you want to try and activate that. Anyway, um, this is end of turn three. With um, with uh, Tokugawa um, looking at his options, uh, given the given the way the battle's unfolded with this kind of outpost down here trying to find defensive terrain and the rest of the uh, Aikida army mainly stationary. Here at the Battle of Nagakute in 1584, part of the Tenka Toitsu game by Haxasim. And um, yeah, as I say, part way through turn four, been just uh, rolling forward, pulling chits, activating units. Um, so um, Aikida himself has activated and moved into attack and is preparing to assault this castle here at Iwasaki Jo. This is worth five victory points, so he wants to get his clan in here, surround this unit, destroy it take the castle, five VPs, thanks very much, then he can move on to better things. So he's kick-started his clan to start that process. And he's having quite a good turn, actually, This this at the moment. He's managed to get this clan here, H, um, Hori Hidimasa, uh, into defend orders, and they're now well-positioned in these mountains with uh, a clan on their flank. And he's managed to move... Uh, this Taga Hiditane clan up onto uh, their flank and uh, controlling this crossroads here now. So uh, what the what Aikido and um, and uh, Tokugawa were both thinking was that you know that this lot would pour down here, control this area in here, and then could could rough up this lot at their leisure uh, before all this sort of long tail of the Aikido army got to activate but actually they are beginning to get enough stuff in here that maybe maybe they can they can just hold up this maneuver for long enough to activate the rest of their army so it's all you know it's not looking so open and such a foregone conclusion, really interesting. Unfortunately for Aikido, what he's just pulled is the um, green combat chit. And he hasn't got any units in attack. Oh, no, he does. He's got himself in attack orders. I completely missed that. So they are now going to get to assault this castle. That will be fun. But what won't be so fun is over here... They've got a guy in defence here completely surrounded. Now, his clan mates are also in defence, and, and you don't get a chit which moves you in defence. That's the weakness of defence, is that you unless you actually throw your clan chit in the cup, you don't even get your one hex can move. You're just your one hex move, you're just locked where you are. And so Although it would be legal for this guy to move in here, because this guy's in a zone of control, and for this guy to move in here, because this guy's in a zone of control, th the orders don't allow it. They're, it's legal, but but they they can't move because their their clan chit L has not been pulled, and so poor old unit here of this Hidikazu clan is going to be fighting that lot all on his own. Now, they are across a river, and he's not in attack orders, so he can probably elect not to fight those, which is interesting. He's probably got to fight these two on his own. Yes, in fact, that's what's going to happen. But firstly, let, my, let me switch my attention over here to 
um, Aikida himself, who was going to look at how to take on um, how to take on this. And he is going to, I guess, declare himself the lead unit, uh, the spearhead unit, and then move in here. This guy is going to come one, two, three in here. And this guy is going to come one, two, three in here. And now they're going to perform their attack. I'll get the charts and tables out and we'll see how it looks. Okay, so it's a little bit confusing as to what happens in terms of terrain effects here. Because we've got two units attacking across um, firearms prepared hexes, but one which isn't. And the rules say you only get the firearms prepared bonus if everyone is. Um, but then it isn't entirely clear to me in that case whether if if they were let's say this unit were attacking from here and you would you get a minus three minus one for each unit and it says you, these modifiers apply as soon as one hex height is involved in a cumulative up to one type of modifier for each attacking unit I'm not entirely sure what that means one type of modifier for each attacking unit. I suppose you would get a minus one for all of them, I guess. Or would you? I don't know. I really don't know. Anyway, that doesn't apply. They're getting a, a modifier because they are closing ranks against an assault, which gives a blue minus one on the dice. And that's the only thing I can find for them in this situation. So, um, what's going to happen is... These are the modifiers. Um, it's a plus two on the blue dice and a plus seven on the red dice. And this is likely to look very ugly for the defender. So plus two, plus seven. Uh, let's throw these in here and see what we get. Wow. Well, that is... Um, uh, <laughs> it didn't really need a plus seven on the red dice, did we? Um, that is the result. So that is five... 18. Well, the red goes off the chart at 13, so 5, um, 5, 13. It's just a defender retreats. Um, okay, so uh, he's going to have to pull up out of this castle. Let's push him there. And okay, who wants to who wants to follow him in? That's the question. Hmm. Hmm. And can we all pursue? I mean. That's another question. He's vacated this hex. But can we all bump forward after him? Or can we only move one unit forward to occupy the hex that he's vacated? Um, Entirely clear. Move one unit in, in attack that exerts a zone of control and withdrawing the unit. No, it looks like one unit pursues. Okay. Alright, well, let's drop Aikida himself into this castle then. Um, and that's, that will be worth five victory points. I don't know whether to add it in now. I don't think I will. 
So that was that attack done. And now we come over here to this one where poor old matey here is in melee with three clans. This is non-obligatory, so he won't attack there. He will attack into these two. And let's have a look at the charts and tables. Um, melee gives him red dice of his Alan and Mass. So that's plus four on the red dice, nothing on the blue. Melee gives the defender Uh, fire arm, um, there are five power of firearms prepared and neither of them are, they're across open hex sites. So minus on the red dies of their Alan and Mass and that's minus four, minus six. So we're on zero, minus two. Um, smallest modifier for defender state, where everything's good order because this isn't in the fight, so everything else is good order. Um, anything in manoeuvre or regroup? Um, the blue Tokugawa units are in attack and attack, and L is in defend, so no, nothing there, no support, no Totsugeki, any leadership? No, nope, no leadership, any terrain modifiers? No terrain modifiers, we simply have a blue one, sorry, blue zero, red minus two. Let's give it a go. Okay, so that's a three eight. Three eight on the combat table, blue three, red eight. And that's no effect. Okay, well he's escaped um, unscathed from that, so I suppose he can count himself reasonably lucky. And we move on to another chip draw. Nagakuti, end of turn five, coming into the beginning of turn six. This is a position we've reached. And the uh, blue black Tokugawa army has kind of achieved its first. Uh, objective which was to split the Aikida army in two so you've now got the Aikida army over here and the rest of it over here and a few bits down there and the the this sort of Tokugawa clans uh, with this really central position they've smashed apart the um, the forces the Aikida forces that were defending here and actually the Aikida casualties are mounting up uh, quite a lot. If I just bring the camera around here, um, that is the sort of dead pile in there for the Aikida um, army, and there's nothing uh, yet in there from the Tokugawa army. So they are pick they have picked their way through here. A couple of good dice rolls, a couple of units that were essentially surrounded in here, and therefore can't retreat and then take wounds instead of retreating and you get into a spiral where your modifiers get worse and worse and worse as you get more and more wounded and that's what's going to happen to this guy in here. Um, Tokugawa himself was lining up or lining himself up for an attack into the sort of flank of this clan J who couldn't receive any orders but late on in the initiative phase they managed to kick into action and um, drive forward and attack this lone unit here. Any good news on the Aikida front? Well, there was a little bit in that they managed to get their, um, they managed to get their uh, army uh, strategy uh, into play. So there, um, this uh, Choda long snake is now active and they actually tried to use uh, this retreat order on Clan L, um, who had another unit in there, and they wanted to try and back away through um, Clan K down here, 
and any pursuit would have been stopped by the zones of control from Clan K, and that would have allowed them to, uh, you know, hopefully rally and reform and recover some of their damage. Unfortunately, their chip never got drawn, and the unit that they were really wanting to withdraw got killed um, before they ever got away, and now, you know, uh, and they didn't get to act because the turn ended before they ever acted. So all that went wrong for them. The, all the chits came out in the wrong order for them to get anything done at all. Um, and that did allow uh, Tokugawa to take a you know, seize the initiative and get this real central position and mop up the units that he had damaged and all kinds of stuff. Uh, they would have much preferred if uh, the chits had come out in in an order that favoured them, but the green Aikido army wasn't having any luck there. Still, at least even with these units cut off, they can now give them battle orders, and those are guaranteed to work. Um, so they have a bit more flexibility. These aren't just cut adrift. They can, they can uh, change orders through those um, sort of tactical battle orders. And um, also it means that... Um, Aikida can now be using all of his points from from here on activating his clans um, rather than having to throw two or three points a turn into his battle orders. So uh, yeah, hopefully, for him at least, he can start getting this lot active um, and find some orders that allows them to influence the battle because at the moment... Um, they're just getting picked apart piecemeal by a more, uh, a better coordinated force with a good central position. I'm at the start of turn eight here at Nagakute in Tenkatoitsu by Hexasim. Um, you'll see over here a lot of the Aikida army still unable to move, just haven't got the activations, chits haven't been pulled, failed to get out of deploy orders, all very difficult. Um, in here, their unit in there, in that great defensive, defensive terrain, is put, putting up a brilliant job of delaying um, uh, <clears throat> his demise, anyway, and trying to give his army more time to activate. And it actually forced Clan B to withdraw, because this guy took, a, uh, took some losses on the way in, and this guy can select where he's attacking anyway. They decided to come back and lick their wounds and try and regroup. Over here, uh, a lot of the Aikida clans kicked back into attack orders and have put up quite a stiff resistance. Last turn they had a brilliant turn. You can see um, the losses over here, the green pile for the Aikida army, but they've actually started inflicting losses on the, to um, uh, the uh, Tokugawa army. And um, in here, Tokugawa's own clan, Clan A, is actually engaged and they've taken a loss, they've taken wounds there, they've taken wounds there. Um, they're at something of a disadvantage. Clan J has also lost a unit um, and, and are split because this guy went off chasing something that he later destroyed and is now stranded away from his clan over there. Um, so the danger is that Clan B manages to pick them off and they get their clan split up and, and surrounded and destroyed in detail. Um, anyway, yeah, and even down here, uh, clans K and L putting up very stiff resistance against uh, against enemy uh, that tried to sort of outnumber them. Um, and it's all gone pretty well for them. Um, what's not going well is activating these forces over here. Um, so yeah, uh, the chits come out, they can come out in very kind orders or very unkind orders. I think Green have had much, the Aikido army in Green have had much the worse of the chit ordering and, and have not been drawing their own clan chits and not been drawing things in the right at the right time. And Blue have had very much the way of it in terms of getting their orders done and then the attack chits come out exactly when they want to attack and then the enemy attack chits when the enemy are outnumbered and um, yeah it's worked quite well for them but they took uh, a bit of a pasting on the dice rolls last turn um, and it all went a bit wrong so here we are coming into turn eight and um, from the track here you'll see starting in turn ten 
we get these F results, which means fatigue. And what that means is that instead of needing all five phases to end the turn, we just need the two sides combat phases to end the turn. So turns can end much, much quicker um, from turn 10 onwards. So we've got two more full turns and then potentially seven turns that can pass much quicker. Although they needn't necessarily, they could still be extremely long turns. But it, it becomes much more random as to the turn length uh, from 10 onwards. So yeah, I'm just going to play through turns and, and give updates as and when things change significantly. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. Hm. Maybe I'll go and feed the cat first.